Linda Whitney. So congratulations on coming back. how I make the artwork that's in the gallery, um, just very briefly, but <laughs> I'm not going to get too technical, but if you have any questions I want you to ask, because I, I don't want to be talking to myself, I want to be talking to you, and I don't want to talk below your abilities or understanding or way above them, okay? What I do is called mezzotint. Um, and what it, it was, all printmaking techniques were developed for commercial purposes. Mezzotint was developed when craftsmen, unfortunately, they were men, no women, back in the Baroque period, wanted to copy paintings because you and I and most other people couldn't afford a painting. You could only afford a painting if you were the church or royalty or somewhere in that in between, between those two. The rest of us could, if we were lucky, uh, collect a print. And so what these uh, craftsmen did is they developed this technique of going from light to dark by taking a serrated rocker. Yours probably look quite a bit different than mine. But basically, this is an 85, which means there are 85 teeth per inch on this rocker. Okay? And then you take copper plate. This is an old dead plate I printed many, many years ago. And you rock across the surface of the plate 24 different directions. Up, down, diagonal, both diagonals, and then you just keep, you know, going a little different direction. I use, on my plates, I actually use a 65 rocker, 12, 12 different directions, and then I move to a 100 rocker, and my rockers are quite a bit bigger because although this little plate didn't take me very long to rock, and this is what you get from it, the plates I printed those from took me a long time. <laughs> I like talk radio and podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and books on tape <laughs> or on Audible. Um, once you get it rocked 24 times, I transfer my image. Actually, what I do is I do my drawing on a tracing paper. I used a, um, a way to transfer that drawing by using carbon paper. And I have a little uh, special little commercial drawing tool that I can go over the drawing, which will go through the carbon paper and apply it to the plate. And then once you get that far, if you want whites, oh, I should explain what, I, what I've done by rocking. <laughs> what I've done by rocking is um, just, you're Dennis today. You're out in Dennis's field, out of the farm, and you have a teaspoon. You've got an acre in front of you. And you take that teaspoon and you pick up a little tiny bit of dirt and you put it right beside the hole. And you do that all over the field. So every single space either has a tiny hole or a tiny little hill of dirt. That's what I've done to the plate by rocking it. It's called burring it. It's called what, Linda? Burring, B-U-R-R. Because you've got, and actually once the, when you when you have just finished rocking the plate, if you ran your hand fingers across it really fast, you could take the skin off your fingers because it is really rough. The reason for that is it holds ink. Now, if you were to, to at that point, 
ink it and run it through an etching press, it would print solid black. So now you've got to go from that solid black to the white. This is the tool you use. It's called a burnisher. So basically on your plate, if you want it white, you press really hard. If you're not sure, you'll press lightly and over time develop your image. If you want it black, you just leave it. But although I have done probably a thousand mezzotints, every single piece of copper is different. And I don't know why, it all comes from the same company, but I don't know why it has to be so different. Some of them are harder. Um, some of them are really soft. Some of them have like air bubbles in them. So you have to deal with that. But basically then what you do is you, you burnish. This plate probably took me a day to burnish it. This plate, I'm on the, this is actually the third proof. It probably took me six weeks to burnish it. And then I proof it, and I burnish it, and I proof it, and I burnish it. I do that five times. Okay. And then, sometimes six, <laughs> depending again <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> Now these guys are heavy, they're about 20 pounds. I'm old. <laughs> but this is, how, this is how I go to the gym. Every morning I get up at one o'clock in the morning. I have two elderly dogs that I have to take care of, but then I go to, I go to my print lab at two, which is in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I print for the next four hours. And it depends on the size of the plate as to how many prints I can uh, print. If I'm going to print this plate, I can print two in four hours. It takes about an hour just to wipe the plate. You card the sticky ink on, and then you use different cloths slowly to polish it off. And then, and I usually walk around looking like a mechanic because I've got ink under my fingernails. Then. You hand wipe, that's my last wipe. Because that polishes up the whites, but doesn't take the ink from the blacks or the grays. So it's quite a long process. And you gotta love it or don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you have any, yes? So the different grays you get by how deep you well, basically when you burnish, you're pushing those burrs back into the plate. So Dennis is out there with a rolling pin, rolling his burrs back in, or his piles of dirt back into the holes. But the difference in grayscale comes from how deep? Uh, uh, how, how hard you press mm -hmm. the burrs back into the plate. And I found out something this winter. I, I understand that copper is a good antibacterial. I breathe it all day long. <laughs> very, very fine. <laughs> I break myself, but I haven't been sick since I retired. <laughs> might be another reason for that. <laughs> well, I've never worked so hard in my life, so. <laughs> but I don't have to deal with people. <laughs> And just my crazy neighbor, and I, <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> Any other questions? So then how many copies would you get ah. to compare to this? I just sent a portfolio of 100 mezzotints to New York. Those, I have, you can get usually 25, 30, but five of those are proofs, at least five. So that's, you know, 20 to 25. Because this was a commission piece, I didn't dare start losing my image. Um, because you basically, every time you go through the press, you're going through a high pressure press. Every time you go through, 
you're smashing that copper down. So sooner or later, it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. I have printed up to 20, uh, up to 54, and I've printed as few as nine for the plate started to break. Now, these plates are expensive, and I have a friend who um, is a, he works with copper, and he can anneal my plates, but he does it, <laughs> he could do this one in maybe a day, and something that size would take forever. So, but you can't, you can't reuse them unless they're annealed. So sooner or later, you guys can look that direction and my house is gonna just sink. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so full of copper. <laughs> I mean, I give it away, you know, I give it to my friend who makes sculptures out of it, so. So if you need any copper, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Pottery, but <laughs> well, it has some nice color and uh, some inspiring actually. Oh, I can believe that. Yeah. So you want the dust? Ooh. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Is that dust? laughs> when you when you uh, before you work on uh, any type of intaglio, this is an intaglio process, your plate has a sharp edge. You have to bevel it. And I bevel it into a garbage can. I'll just put a, a, a special pottery parlor bag. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yes? Do you have to use copper or could you use gold? I, I, <laughs> gold might be too soft. Right. Well, does it need to be copper though? I no. Other um, metals? Uh, zinc is too brittle. I tried that. Zinc's a lot cheaper. And I met a young man in Russia from Poland who takes a piece of aluminum, and in fact, my diptych print here is because of him. He, he's a very tall, strong young man, just finished his doctorate in printmaking in Poland. He takes a piece of aluminum and he drags it through the gravel. That's how he rocks his place. <laughs> <laughs> goes back in and he smooths it down. Tell us about your, your trip to Russia and how you got there and what you displayed, etc. Okay. Um, all of the prints that are in Russia, I, all, I have other sister and brother uh, pieces from the editions here. But the, uh, what it is, it's called International Mezzotint Festival. And actually this this year, or past year, this is 2020. In 2019, it was the fifth uh, exhibition. They do it every other year. Um, I became involved with them right away because I was just getting really super interested in mezzotinting when they started the festival. This is the catalog of prints from one exhibition. And they do it well, really well. It's at the Fine Art Museum in the Ekaterinburg, uh, Russia, which is east of Moscow. Um, it is a wonderful place. It's in the Ural Mountains. Um, the museum is just gorgeous. And in fact, they have just renovated a, a new building just for prints. So in 2021, when I have a they call it a special show. Um, we would call it a solo show because I won an award, uh, but it will be in that new building. Um, a number of years ago, I was nominated as a mezzotint ambassador, and I couldn't, why me? What do I, I mean, I taught here, I, tell, I talk about mezzotints whenever I can, but what else did I do? What I did was every other year when we send work to Russia, I gather up the American artist's work, I repackage it, 
I send it to Washington, D.C., and it goes by diplomatic pouch. It's only, I didn't realize this, but it's the only country that does it that way. And then, at actually, two years later, I get all that work back, and then I send it back to the artist. So that's what I did. <laughs> Smart job. <laughs> Getting money out of the artists to pay for the shipping is the hardest part. <laughs> so I usually just eat it. But um, then in 2017, I was uh, I was named uh, I was had been nominated for ambassador and I was named a mezzotint ambassador. And there's a big ceremony. I didn't know about that because I wasn't there in 2017. <laughs> But a good friend of mine and I decided, well, we're both getting kind of old. If we're going to go, we should go. So we started saving our money. Um, and unbeknownst to me, I was nominated for a state North, uh, U U.S. State Department fellowship grant and was given the grant, um, which was really super nice because it paid for most of my trip. Now, if you're ever nominated for one of these things, don't book your airline before you get the grant. <laughs> you have to fly under the American flag. And we were going on Aeroflot, <laughs> which, which I really enjoyed because they treat you well. <laughs> Even in economy, they treat you very well. Food's a whole lot better, but anyway. Um, so we decided to go. We let them know on that end that we were coming. And there were a hundred visitors that the museum puts up. Uh, they pay our hotel, well, they didn't pay my hotel room because I had a grant, but they pay your hotel room, they feed you. Um, and the hotels there are just marvelous. We stayed in a nice hotel. It wasn't, it wasn't a high, a super high end, but breakfast? was everything. Fruit, vegetables, breads, bakery goods, coffee, teas, meats, cheese, fish, raw fish, uh, eggs, everything. Whatever, go back as many times as you want. Um, and then the museum picked, well, we did have a few lunches on our own as we you know, had a little time off. Um, we had a number of presentations. As an ambassador, I had to, Go, there was one other ambassador and some other people. We were uh, sent different here and there, and radio stations. And, and bring some artwork, they said, to a radio station? <laughs> 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 um, but they videotaped it. So I had the, the announcer actually work on I had a rocked plate, and I took along a burnisher, and I had him work on it. And I thought, well, it would just be something hokey, but he did a beautiful little flower, <laughs> which we printed later in the week. But um, we also went to the uh, US consulate there and met with a group of about 100 Russian people who were learning to speak English. And my job, and, and my job was to, they had uh, like 20 people at a table, and I had to go to each table and then ask them questions in English, and they, they needed to respond to me in English. Now, the interesting thing, when you walk down the street in Russia, people don't talk a lot, they don't smile a lot, so you get a feeling that these people are a little cold. <coughs> Not true at all. They're just focused. <laughs> um, at this gathering, people were laughing, and talking and telling stories. And so I asked, I asked that question. I said, I've been walking around now for a couple of days. Oh, well, we're just busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we were treated very well. We, the, the, sh the show this past year was, uh, there were a thousand mezzotints, a hundred of us from all over the world visiting. The, the, juries, the jurors were from all over the world. Um, a lot of the, uh, the people, our artists that were there are from the East, a lot from Eastern Europe, a lot from Europe, New Zealand, um, Australia. Uh, of course, 
see, there were five of us from the U.S. Uh, all of we knew each other through we have a we have a international mezzotint society that we communicate with and do things as a U.S. group. Actually, it's an international group, but mostly from the U.S. Um, we happened to be in the city on their 190th birthday. It was a Saturday night, and so there was fireworks, and the museum treated us to a wonderful meal in this really nice uh, restaurant. Um, and we went out on the roof of the, the building and we watched all the fireworks. Um, and then they, they danced. They had, a, they had music and they were dancing all night. We, a number of us left early, but one of the American women, which if she'd have been a student, I would have, mm. <laughs> <laughs> She forgot her shoes. <laughs> so the director of the museum had to get back in and get her shoes for her. <laughs> she had a, and she didn't make it to breakfast the next morning. <laughs> so. It was a great trip, yes. Where does your inspiration come from for these? Is it something that, that happens as you're doing them, or do you have something in mind before you start? I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> I was married to a, a traditional powwow dancer for a number of years. We spent a lot of time at powwows. Um, I have arthritis in my all over my right side, so dancing but I really, I love the regalia, the beautiful colors, and of course, historically, every tribe had their own designs, but now it's kind of a mishmash, although if you do know the, the groups of people well enough, you can pick out, oh, this is, this is, at least this is prairie, or this is woodlands, or this is Osage, or the, whatever. Um, so what I started doing, uh, People started finding out I was an artist, so they hired me to do their portraits and their regalia. So I started out doing drawings, and then I quickly moved into to doing the prints, uh, particularly after I retired, because one, I wanted, well, I do mezzotint wrong. I don't do it in the traditional manner. Usually you go um, from black to white with a lot of shading, like a charcoal drawing. <coughs> Mine's, you know, more textural, and the textures and the movement really intrigued me. So I started, I was photographing, and I still go out and photograph. I have a lot of friends who photograph and send me photographs, and then people who want to be in my work thinking they're going to get artwork, but you notice there are no faces. <coughs> if they're not portraits of people, they're portraits of the regalia and the dance itself, and for me, I want to feel that drum when I finish the piece. That's when I know I've accomplished what I'm trying to do. Yes? Um, some of your prints have color in it. Yes. So is that so, because I'm understanding that when you make a print that's black and white, mm -hmm. so do you add the coloring later after you print the black and white, or is that part of the process? You can, you can, you can have a, a print that has th numerous colors, but then every color has to have a different plate. W when I first came here, I was doing full color intaglio, which I had five or six <coughs> plates for image. Um, that, I live in a cracker box house. I don't have room for that. So what I did is I decided I would hand color. Dumbest idea I've ever had. <laughs> and they are the most successful prints I've ever done. It takes me eight hours to hand color one. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I got another show. I got another <laughs> <laughs> Ask Ann, I complain about it all the time. Are you planning to go back to the Yes, yeah. They might have to pull me in a little wagon, but <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> Yes. Uh, August of 2021. So 
what do you do with your print? So if you, um, I, I understand some of it is a request. You just said that you send a hundred to New York, but if you make one, how many? Uh, I, I I do um, editions of eighteen or less, except when it's a special print. Like this one, this is kind of my um, gift to my friends uh, that I met. Uh, we did a, a print exchange, um, so I printed a number of those, but for the most part I stop at 18. And what do you do with those? They go, they, they travel. And, they, and do you sell them? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on social security. <laughs> <laughs> One of those plates costs $200. <laughs> I need to pay for my habit somehow. <laughs> There are there are um, <coughs> additions that I don't that don't sell well. I just and these I don't care. In fact, I'm going to stop doing the smaller prints and just do these, which means it'll kick me out of the shows because there's usually a size. Plus, some of these that are in the gallery I ship and I get so many of them back damaged, even though I pack them really well. Um, <coughs> Plus, <coughs> UPS fees. I mean, I'll, I'll, even the small pieces, it's 100 bucks shipping back because I have to pay to have them returned to. So that is, that those are the framed ones? Or just just the framed ones. If I, if I show internationally, they get carefully rolled in a special manner and put in a mailing tube and mailed. I like those. It's a lot easier. You should... You should <laughs> Say, when people ask me how I am, I say I'm old and crabby. <laughs> the crabby part comes from framing the artwork. <laughs> Maybe you should just, you know, do the same thing, roll them up and send them to people so people can frame them themselves. They, they, yeah. just, they wouldn't even open the mailing to me. I mean, the, the, the edition of prints that I sent to New York, they, they were just, they were not framed. Although one year, uh, we, the International Medicine Society every year does an exchange, and there are 24 prints in the exchange, and one year I spent my Christmas vacation building frames for every one of those. Yeah, that was still another dumb idea. <laughs> um, we had a show here, then it went to California, it went to New Jersey, it traveled around the United States. Went to Minot, I finally gave it to the Minot. Because they yeah, they've collected a lot of my work and yes, I've seen shows that you've had close here to in Jamestown, right? The, mm -hmm. the art gallery mm -hmm. there. I remember even at the hospital, mm -hmm. the natural gallery now in Dun and Fargo. Yep. Um, do can those places <coughs> keep you keeping a sample or anything? No, nope, I'm gonna say buy one. Do you, do you get them there, take them back? Yeah. Do you make some sales then? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, not always, but yeah. Um, the International Mesotent Festival, the museum keeps one of our entries. You can enter five, or you can enter seven, they will pick five. They've always picked seven, all seven of mine, and I never understood why. Why me? And here it is, the director loves Native American. <laughs> I didn't even know that until I met his brother. So. I think that's, I think he's, yeah, 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 I think he's giving me the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> but, no, it, my trip to Russia was fabulous. I loved it. And then we went to Moscow for a couple of days, and, and we stayed at the presidential hotel. <laughs> we got a real, we, we booked it early, so we, we got a real deal. And the food, <laughs> you don't eat so well at a high-end restaurant here. It was, <laughs> you didn't have to eat the rest of the day. <laughs> Wanted to be a kangaroo and stay in the But, but yeah, students who ever have a chance to travel, travel. I think Kay even has pictures of me teaching in Mexico. Yes. 
And I even took a printer to it from La Paz. Yeah. Like the little card that yeah. you mm -hmm. Because it's it's really an experience. Any other questions? How long do you display this for? There's two together I find it or No. <laughs> Normally, my diptychs are all printed on one sheet of paper. They're small enough. These are going to be, um, this young man that I met that drags his aluminum through the gravel actually had four. And I'd like to get up to do, doing four, but they're all framed separately. But they, you butt the frames together, so it looks like you're looking through a window. And then the frames are going to be a lot smaller than the ones that are in the gallery. A lot smaller. A lot easier for me to carry. <laughs> so. I noticed that you don't put your signature on the canvas. Do you normally sign your artwork? Yes, they're all signed. It's just usually, um, this is called a bleed print because you print off the edge of the paper. And I don't leave any white at the bottom, so it's hard to see my signature. But um, basically, I mean, here's the color of the paper, but it's title, condition, 1 over 18, 2 over 18, whatever it is, signature, and year. But on these, you have to look closely because it's, it's done in pencil. Because this paper is um, a cotton-based paper, and if it gets all wet, so nothing's going to hurt anything because it's oil-based uh, ink. And um, if, you, if you signed it in ink, it would run. So I, you always use a pencil. But yeah, I do sign it. So that, go ahead. So oil-based, how long does it take a print to dry? Uh, it's mo it's, it takes about three days to cure. Yeah, but basically after I print it, uh, these are proof, so I, I, I didn't put these, but I put it in a press. It's blotting paper. So it doesn't, it's not all wrinkly. These are hard to, to mount because you have to come up with a, an Asian way of mounting the paper because you can't just run tape across the top. <laughs> So that was something else. In fact, I, I asked Sally Jepson and Grant uh, Jamestown. She'd had some uh, float-mounted prints. And I said, how do, you, how do you do this? She said, well, Anna showed me how. And Anna's a good friend of my daughter's. So I asked my daughter, did Anna show you how? <laughs> she said, Mom, you showed me. I showed Anna. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say my, my brain is so full I've forgotten things, but <laughs> I think I'm just getting old. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? Well, you indicate there's a lot of pain involved in producing your art. It is. <laughs> uh, uh, is that correlated to anything in the art world? The more pain, the more value, the more honored, or is that? No, more arthritis. <laughs> The, the biggest problem with this kind of artwork is uh, carpal tunnel. But thank goodness, for 15 years, I hand milk goats. <laughs> <laughs> and I built muscles. <laughs> and thank goodness, I built muscles doing this so I can shovel. <laughs> and I'm doing a lot of shoveling. <laughs> so you'll see me in 20 years later. <laughs> Shoveling away. You must really love it to make the notes up there. Yeah, you really have to be dedicated, or else you just don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, plus, I don't like cleaning my house. <laughs> I take off my glasses, which I have to do to see this. I don't see the dirt <laughs> or the dog hair. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, well, if we're, yes. Do you have any other interests in art that you, uh, you know, you get an expert in one area? I loved doing caustic, but I realized even before I retired, uh-uh. <laughs> Let's see, you're not 18 anymore. <laughs> what is it that you really want to do? And I decided I've given away all my work and all my supplies to make other work. Just this. Of course, if you have a thousand prints with an addition of 18 each, <laughs> that's a lot of paper that's in my house. And it needs special storage, so. I look like a hoarder, but it's all paper. <laughs> Valuable paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't told my insurance person yet. <laughs> well, that's what the copper, you know, they're, they're, they're stealing copper wires. And stuff. I know. So. Even when we lived in Sanger, people were breaking into the old dilapidated houses and stealing the copper piping. But, and I have, through my father, I have some shares in a copper mine in Canada, but it doesn't help me out at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, shall we go out to the gallery? Do you have any questions out there? <laughs>